tomorrow is um, Pentecost. Um, that's that's one of the more exciting times uh, of of the of the feast days and and all. And um, so we're going to be having that feast over at Holiday Park tomorrow afternoon um, um, with uh, what is it the Great Awakening. Um, Fellowship, and um, they used to, they used to be called Kingdom, but now I think it's the Great Awakening uh, Fellowship, and uh, it's, I'm, you know, it's going to be some good food and some fun people. Uh, Alice, I don't know if you remember Alice from Georgetown. She's always there. Uh, she goes over to that church, and then, um, uh, you know, the baptism baptisms or the immersions in uh, White River and so you know it's going to be a good day at the park. Uh, Weather-wise I think it's going to be a good day. They said a possibility of a short light shower but you know don't change plans so nobody's changing plans <laughs> and uh, so anyway tomorrow's going to be a great day. Um, in talking about uh, Pentecost which is um, begins at sunset today and goes through tomorrow um, to sunset tomorrow. The subject or the title of the message today is Holy Spirit Intensified. And um, it's Holy Spirit Intensified because um, the Holy Spirit was around before uh, what we see happening in Acts, the second chapter. Holy Spirit was around. And so, um, and the thing about the Holy Spirit, you know, in regards to us as humans, we as humans, we weren't meant to uh, live our lives on our own power. You know, it, um, when we try to live it on our own, we just keep falling down. And so we weren't meant to do that. Yeah, literally, too, sometimes. <laughs> um, we weren't meant to do that. Uh, there were some in the Old Testament or the old writings that were um, uh, filled with the Holy Spirit, led by the Holy Spirit. And so I'm going to, you know, just give you some scriptures and talk about a few of them. And we're going to start with, um, of course, Yahshua, uh, which is in, in the New Covenant, Matthew 4, 1. Matthew 4, 1. And I'm just going to read that. And I, did, I didn't uh, uh, put tabs on my, in my Bible for those scriptures today. But Matthew 4, 1. And it says, Then was Josh, Joshua led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Okay, so he was led by the Spirit to go into the wilderness for his time of temptation. Um, so, you know, he didn't you know, get up out of the water after he was baptized. This happened after the baptism or the immersion of Yahshua uh, by John the Baptist. And, um, you know, he, he didn't come up out of the water and say, wow, I think I'll just go in the wilderness. He was led into the wilderness by the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit. And then we can uh, go into the, uh, so I wanted to mention him first. And we can go into the uh, old writings in Exodus 31 and 2. Exodus 31 and 2. Um, and, yeah, I'm sorry I didn't put those tabs in there. Exodus 31 and 2. Well, I could read it from up there. Um, and, and it says, See, I have called by name. Bezaliel, um, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the spirit of Yahweh in wisdom 
and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. Now this is when the people were appointed to build the, the components of the sanctuary. And so he had, um, the Most High had uh, a, not just appointed Bezaliel, uh, Bezaliel, okay, I'll get it, <laughs> um, to, to do it, but he also empowered him with the Holy Spirit to, to be able to accomplish the task. And, and so, um, you know, as well as some others who, who, who were working with him and, and, and put all of that together. If you wanted to read all the way to uh, like verse 11, um, you know, it talks about all the different furnishings and, and uh, the other people that were involved in, in putting that together. But it was all uh, led and, uh, by the Holy Spirit. They were filled. The, the scripture says, I have filled him with the spirit of Yahweh. So he was filled with the spirit of Yahweh. Um, in Judges 6.34, Judges 6.34, Okay, Judges 6.34 uh, said, But the Spirit of Yahweh came upon Gideon, and he blew a trumpet, and Abiezer was gathered after him. So he, the Spirit was, was put on um, Gideon, and, you know, for him to do what he did as well. Um, Judges 11.29 and I'm just going to give you a few examples, a couple more. Um, he, uh, Judges 11:29. And then the spirit of Yahweh came upon um, Jephthah, and he passed over Gilead and Manasseh, and passed over Mesbeth of Gilead, and from Mesbeth of Gilead, he passed over unto the children of Ammon. Okay, and um, and you can read the rest of that account, you know, uh, in regards to, um, you know, the victory and that, you know, he got. But the point is, he, the spirit of the Most High God came upon him. Um, Judges 14 and 6. Judges 14 and 6. And it's, uh, uh. and the spirit of Yahweh came mightily, uh, and this is talking about Samson, talking about Samson, the spirit of Yahweh came mightily upon him and he rent him as he would have rent a kid and he had nothing in his hand, but he told, and this is when he was uh, fighting the young lion, um, let me, let me start at verse five, and when Samson went down and his father and his mother uh, to uh, Timnath and came into the vineyards of Timnath and behold a young lion roared against him and the spirit of Yahweh came mightily upon him and he rent him as he would uh, uh, rent a kid and he had nothing in his hand but he told not his father or his mother what he had done so he was you know uh, uh, um, going to be attacked by this young lion and he just you know with the strength of um, um, that was given to him by the spirit of the most high, you know, which came upon him, he was able to just, just rip that lion apart. And, and, but he didn't tell his parents that, but he had this strength that was given to him, um, um, you know, by the spirit. Uh, Psalm 51, 11, Psalm 51, 11, um, and this is, this is going to be the, yeah, Psalm fifty one eleven, and let's see. And this is talking same thing. How the spirit uh, was active, and it's more than just what I'm reading too. I'm just picking out different things so you could see. Um, and this is David talking, and and you know he he just just love the most high and you know and he was he he said um in starting at verse 10 he said create in me a clean heart 
O Yahweh, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. And so, you know, he wanted to make sure that he maintained that spirit. It is nothing, nothing in the world that can compare with having the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh, in us, um, on us, filling us. It, there is nothing like it. And so, you know, David is like, don't take it away from me. And Saul, he saw where um, the spirit was taken away from Saul, and he just didn't want that to happen to himself. All right. Um, we can, we can also, you know, I mentioned how um, Joshua was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. In Luke 4 uh, and 1, it talks about how he was filled with the Spirit. So let's take a look at Luke 4 and 1. And I've, I've got a whole lot of scriptures I'm just going to go through in talking about this. Um, because I want you to understand how important it is to have the Holy Spirit. And a lot of people... Um, just haven't experienced it. They don't. They just don't understand it. They don't know about it. But um, Luke four and one, and it says, "And Joshua, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan, and same thing was led by the Spirit into the wilderness." Okay, and you know you can read about that temptation and what happened when he was in the Spirit. Um, in verse 14, it says, And Yahshua re returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And so, you know, he, went, he was led by the Spirit when he went in to um, uh, the wilderness for the 40 days of temptation, and then he returned in the power of of the spirit um let's see in verse 18 and the spirit of yahweh is upon me he is him talking and this is when he's telling the people he's in the synagogue and he's telling the people um because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are breathed and verse 19, to preach the acceptable year of Yahweh. And so, um, you know, that he, he did all of that. And he sacrificed himself, you know, and, and rose the third day. And so what I want to do is show you, too, the correlation between um, Pentecost, uh, Shavuot, um, Pentecost, and... Um, first fruits and um, and how it connects to the old writings and in fact um, in Exodus 19 and we're going to go through Exodus 19 verses 1 through 6 like I said I'm going to go through a whole lot of scriptures please 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 research this on your own because I'm trying to take this much stuff and condense it into this little bit right here and so uh, to fit into the time frame uh, this is actually and you know which we we uh, have been going through the book of Leviticus and we're um, you know in Genesis and all of that and so we've been going through that in our Bible studies and um, so you know uh, just connecting the dots and adding all this uh, together uh, takes more than one hour uh, to, to, to try to convey the information. But, you know, I'm giving you these things. And then that way you can go back. If you're writing the scriptures down, you could go back and you can take a look at all of this. And, um, uh, you know, and, and be able to connect the dots yourself. Okay, chapter 19, starting at verse 1. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. All right, now, 
this is the third biblical month. Earlier I was talking about the civil um, uh, month, but now I'm talking about the biblical month, which is a totally different calendar. It's the calendar that the Most High uses for everything. And so I think it was last week um, was the beginning of the third month. Okay, so was when they, they saw the, you know, how the moon was and everything, and it was the beginning of the third month. And so um, in, ver in verse 2, and they departed from Rephidim and were come to the uh, desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness, and there Israel camped before the mount. So they were at the base of Mount Sinai. I will say, too, there is a uh, documentary about the real Sinai. And if you get a chance to look at it, it is very good. It's very informative. Um, we have a copy of that at home. I, um, you know, a lot of people don't like documentaries. I like documentaries. And, uh, but it was very informative in regards to the real Mount Sinai and where it is and what it looks like. and um, you know, the things to protect that uh, area. And so anyway, but they went in, you know, they had uh, uh, pitched in the wilderness and uh, they were at the foot of Mount Sinai. And Moses went up unto Yahweh and um, Yahweh called unto him out of the mountain saying, thus said thou, say thou to the house of uh, it says in King James, Jacob, but it should be to the house of Israel and tell the children of Israel, ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how, how I bear you on eagle's wings and brought you unto myself. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So he's telling Moses, he, they're at the foot of the mountain. He's telling Moses, you know, I'm going to give you this information that I want you to share with the people of Israel, with my chosen people. I want you to share this information with them. So um, Moses went up there and this is when he received the law. Now, it wasn't that the laws didn't exist before Moses received it, but they were now put in writing. And um, if we go back and we read the scriptures, we know that uh, Abraham and, and, you know, there were others that did the things that were um, in accordance to the word, in accordance to the law, even though they didn't have the written law at that point in time. And so now we're at this point where Moses is going to receive the law and he's going to tell the people. And uh, this was in the third month. We are in the third month. And Pentecost is the anniversary of the time that Moses received the law. OK, uh, let's now it's called many things, several things. It's called Pentecost. It's called Shavuot. Um, S H A uh, V U O T. Um, let's see, it's called First Fruits, and I'll read about that here in Leviticus in the 23rd chapter. I, uh, we can be going to that right now while I'm talking, but uh, Leviticus 23rd chapter is, uh, refers to it as First Fruits, and we have had the first fruit uh, when uh, Yahshua um, was risen from the dead. He was the first fruit. And um, this first fruits that we're talking about, let's see, let me go to chapter 23, verses 9 through 14. Verses 9 through 14. And we'll read that. And if I confuse any of you, if you have any questions, Please write it down. Let me know. 
message me, put a comment in, you know, and, you know, I can answer that question because I don't mean for this to be confusing and I'm trying to say it in an order where, you know, it would be um, understood, you know, I'm trying to make it plain. So, okay, in chapter 23, verses, starting at verse 9, it says, And Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When ye be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then shall re, uh, ye bring a sheaf of first fruit from your harvest unto the priests. And ye shall wave the sheaf before the, uh, Yahweh to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. This was the day after the Sabbath. So uh, the first fruit is the day after the Sabbath. Um, uh, and so ye shall offer that day. And it's in the third month. And so anyway, going on, verse 12. And ye shall offer that day when ye shall wave the sheaf, a he lamb without blemish for the first year for a burnt offering unto Yahweh. And the meat offering um, thereof shall be two... Uh, tenth deals of fine flour mingled with oil, an offering made by fire unto Yahweh for a sweet savor, and the drink offering thereof shall be of wine, and the fourth part of hen, and ye shall neither um, bread, eat neither bread, nor parched corn, nor green ears, until the self same day when ye have brought an offering unto Yahweh. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings, okay? So this, this celebration um, of first fruits is um, to continue on forever. Um, the other scripture that I want to go to is Deuteronomy 16, verses 9 through 12. Deuteronomy 16, Verses 9 through 12. And this and it's talking about the same thing. Seven weeks thou shalt number unto thee. Begin to number seven weeks from such time as thou beginnest to put a sickle to the corn. And thou shalt keep the feast of weeks. Because, see, the feast of weeks is also another name for Pentecost, for Shavuot, for uh, first fruits. And thou shalt keep the feast of weeks unto Yahweh thy Elohim with a tribute of a freewill offering of thy hand, which thou shalt give unto Yahweh thy Elohim according to um, uh, as Yahweh thy Elohim has blessed thee. And thou shalt rejoice, this is a joyful time, before Yahweh thy Elohim. Thou and thy sons and thy daughters and thy manservant and thy maidservants and the Levite that is within thy gates and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow that are among you in the place which Yahweh thy Elohim has chosen to place his name there. And thou shalt remember that thou was a bondman in Egypt and thou shalt observe and do these statutes. And so... This is something that supposed, you know, this is still that same thing. Um, but here he's calling it the Feast of Weeks. Um, it's seven weeks plus one day. And so when we look at, you know, so that's 50. 49 days plus one. Seven times seven is 49. 49 days plus one, that's 50. And uh, that's where the word Pentecost come from is that 50. Yahshua rose from the dead and he was here 40 days and then 10 days after that was Pentecost. He was the first first fruit and then on Pentecost the Feast of Weeks was the first fruits and this is the, begin uh, the, the first fruit for all uh, believers. OK, and so um, we'll get into Acts in just a minute. So we are together together. You know, this is telling us this is a good time. This is a joyful time. We're together together, special offering. Um, but he says to guard and do his laws. 
And so as long as we do those things, you know, it, it's, it's great. Now, uh, I meant to read that scripture from the um, scripture Bible, and the scripture Bible is from the Institute for uh, Scripture Research. But um, I'm going to move right on along. Let's go to Acts, the second chapter. And we're going to read quite a bit. We're going to pretty much read the whole chapter. Um, Acts, the second chapter. We're going to read starting at verse 1. All right, Acts 2. I wish I put those tabs in. Um, starting at verse 1. And I know he's got it up on the screen. <laughs> All right. And on the day of Pentecost, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, like I said, this is 50 days after, um, you know, the resurrection of Yahshua was fully come. They were all in one, with one accord in one place. Um, I wish I could really get into this like I want to one accord in one place. There are so many times throughout history where people gathered together and miraculous things took place. And um, this, this time, 50 days after, which is Pentecost, all of these uh, people were together in one place. It was 120 of them. Um, let's see, and in, in, if I go to chapter 1 verse 15 it says in those days um, Peter stood up let me see was it this one might be the verse before that wait a minute um, and I can tell you it's 120 of them okay um, chapter 1 in verse uh, uh, 12 when you get a chance read this um, 12 and if you want to just read it all the way through to, you know, where I'm where I'm reading here. Um, but one of the things that was saying in verse 14, and it listed all these different people, um, and they continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, uh, the mother of Yahshua with his brethren. And, you know, uh, and in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of the names together were about 120. So it was 120. Mary was there. Um, you know, it, it was just a, a lot of people there, male and female, were all there on the day of Pentecost. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord, in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as, as a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues as a fire, and it set upon each of them. So that's 120 cloves of fire. I mean, on, it was on each one of them. And in verse four, 4, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So the Spirit was speaking through these people. And then in verse 5 it says. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem. Jews. Devout men. Out of every nation. Under heaven. So it was people from all over there. And, um, you know. That were there. People from all over. Um, verse 6. Now when this was noised abroad. And the multitudes came together. And they were confounded. Because that every man. Heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galilean? How hear we every man in our, excuse me, our own tongue wherein we were born? And then it lists all these different, um, you know, nations of people um, here and, and, um, and then we go down to, um, let's see, verse 11, the Cretes and the Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. So when they were speaking in this language, each person heard in their own language um, 
the wonderful about the wonderful works of the most high God. And in verse 12, it says, and they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying to one another, what meaneth this? And others mocking, saying, these men are full of new wine. Well, Peter, in verse 14, Peter standing up uh, with the eleven, lifted up his voice, and he said unto them, Ye men of Judah, um, Judea, and all that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known to you, and hearken to my words. These are not drunken, as you suppose. See, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith Yahweh, I will pour out my flesh, um, my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor and smoke. And the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before that great and notable day of Yahweh come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever so shall call upon the name of Yahweh shall be saved. All right, so here these people are speaking 120 of them, the fire of the Holy Spirit was on each one of them and began to speak through them the wonders of the Most High God. And every person from all these different countries were able to hear in their own language. So these people were speaking other languages that they have never, ever, ever spoken before. Uh, I don't, I don't want to get, and this is where some people are going to be uh, kind of upset with me, but I don't want to get this mixed up with an unknown tongue. What was spoken here was a known tongue to people so that they can hear the wonders of the Most High God. But there is an unknown tongue. There is, an, uh, and in fact, the, um, it talks about this, but before I get into unknown tongue, well, no, I'll go ahead and do it. Um, let me see. First Corinthians 14 and 2. Let's, let's, let's go over there. I'll just, I'll just go ahead and do that. First Corinthians 14. Let's see. First Corinthians 14, starting in verse 2. And I'm going to, I'm just going to, I'm going to read 2 through 4, then 13 through 14. And again, you guys got to read all of this. Um, and then 19 and then 27. So I'm, I'm going to read several verses in chapter 14. But please read chapter 14 on your own in, in, in its entirety. Um, starting 2, 2 through 4. Um, no, I'm going to start with one. After charity um, and desire gifts, but rather that you prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto Yahweh. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he, uh, he speaketh mysteries. But he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesies edifieth the church. And so here it's talking about an unknown tongue. So it's not like the unknown tongue doesn't exist. It exists, you know, but it tells us here that th that person that's speaking in the unknown tongue is being edified and that person that's speaking in the unknown tongue is not speaking to men but he's speaking to the most high god all right um and so let another's um in verse 13 and 14 still talking about this unknown tongue wherefore let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray 
that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. You see, um, praying in an unknown tongue, that's, uh, that's our prayer language where the spirit Spirit in us is, is speaking to the to the Most High God is praying, you know, because we can get to a point where we don't even know what to say, and the Spirit in us can can just speak to the Most High in in prayer in this prayer language to the Most High, and um, so this is this is also this unknown tongue. And looking at verse nineteen. We're still talking about these the tongues and the use of the tongues. Yet in the church, I would rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Uh, and and I'm not saying don't ever speak in an unknown tongue in front of other people. And, um, you know, um, but having an interpreter because the spirit of the most high will also give someone the ability to interpret what is being said because it may be that the spirit um that that this is something um particularly that uh people prophesying will will do and then the spirit will also give them the understanding of what they are praying for a person before they speak the prophecy to the person um verse 27 I hope you all understand what I'm saying. Again, if you have, have questions, write them down. Let me know. Um, all right. And then in verse 27, if a man speak in an unknown tongue, let, him, let it be by two or at most three and that by course and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself and to Yahweh because this is again is this this is speaking to Yahweh the spirit of the person uh, communicating with the most high God all right so um, unknown tongues do exist okay and move and, and, and moving on in regards to um, the noise there was there was noise on the day of Pentecost you know and so it was referring to the noise and in, in Exodus 2018, it was talking about the noise when the people were um, at the foot of Sinai. Because like I said, this is also the anniversary. This is the anniversary of when they received the, um, the writings from the Most High. Exodus 20 and 18. Ooh, I hope I get through this. <laughs> Exodus 20 and 18. All right. Um, and it says, and all the people, like I said, they were, they were, they were there at the foot of the, you know, at the mountain, and all the people saw the thunderings and lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they were moved and stood afar off. Um, and they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not Yahweh speak with us, lest we die. This noise was so great. The thunderings and, and the, the, the voice of the Most High was so great. The people became afraid. They, they kind of moved away. You know, they kind of backed up off of that because it was just so powerful and um so they you know like i said the the the, the fire the the wind the smoke the thunder the the lightnings and all of that uh you know was just tremendous uh for them there's another time in the bible that talks about these thunders and 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 in in the book of revelation so we'll go to revelation 4 and 5 revelation 4 and 5 Chapter 4, verse 5. And, um, and it says, and out of the throne, okay, this is, this is um, you know, this is when they are, um, uh, John is on the Isle of Patmos and he, he gets the vision and the Most High is showing him all of these things. And so 
he said, you know, he had looked and the door opened to heaven, you know, and then he, so he could hear and he could see in the heaven at this point. And he said in verse five, and out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of Yahweh. And so uh, Isaiah talks about these seven spirits, but right now I'm not going into that. But, um, you know, so there's these lightnings and thundering. His, his voice is so powerful, okay? And so uh, uh, Revelation 11, 19 is, an, is another one where he's still, you know, he's talking about these thundering. Um, and it says, And the temple of Yahweh was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of, of his testimony, and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. You know, and so... Uh, here we are again with, with all of this, this thunderings and, 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 and lightnings and all of that. And then in uh, chapter 19, verse 6, chapter 19, verse 6, and it says, And I heard as it was of a great multitude as the voice of many waters and as the voice of mighty thundering saying, Alleluia for Yahweh Elohim omnipotent reigneth. Now, in this particular case, this this noise, this and these the, the voice as the voice of thundering, mighty thunderings. These are the the ones uh, up in heaven that are praising the most high. This time this is coming from the, the ones praising the most high. And so even those voices are, you know, are loud. And it's interesting, you know, when we want to praise him, it's like. Praise the Lord. Pray. But we we got to let that praise come on out, you know, and be, um, you know, powerful. With, there's a song. I wish I had given it to Bob to play. I heard it on the radio. And every time I hear it, I got to turn it up and I got to listen to it. And it's and it's and I don't know the name of it. And somebody online might know the name of it and they could write it down, um, you know, send it to me in a comment or something. But it's, it says, um, uh you know, talking about praise and it says hands, hands go up and praise gets loud. And um, and and that's that's how it is when you praise, you know, your hands are going up and the praise gets loud. And, um, you know, and boy, I could have a good time by myself. I'm telling you, just <laughs> praising him. You know, I, I can. Oh, uh, I'm, yeah, I have to say I'm more subdued in, in a group, but. Boy, when I'm, I'm by myself, yeah, <laughs> I'm in my vehicle and I'm hearing this music and I'm praying. Um, I probably should pull over, yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, when I'm praising him. And I'm like that person behind me, probably seeing this hand moving all around and they're trying to figure, what is wrong with that person? <laughs> but, but you know, anyway, but the hands go up and the praise gets loud. Uh, that's how it's supposed to be. And, and, you know, we're supposed to make that joyful noise and be happy and let the, the joy of the spirit come out through us, you know. And so it's not going to be a quiet thing. Um, now, here's what's going on. So, you know, that's the thundering, that's the noise and all of that. And they heard that uh, when they were given, they were given the, 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 the Torah, the commandments, and here on the day of Pentecost, we, you know, we see they were in the upper room and it was not quiet because the Holy Spirit came and this time filled each one of them. And, and, and they were speaking and they were speaking loud and people could hear from all over and they could hear in their own language and they couldn't figure out what in the world was going on. But it was the power of the Holy Spirit that was working through those people that were indwelling and, and filling those people. And when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, it's, it's your, your body is not your body. The body is the, it's the, it's under, it's, it's the Holy Spirit belongs to the Holy Spirit, you know, and we, we have to yield ourselves up to the Holy Spirit and let the spirit take over, let the spirit move. Okay. Now also what was going on in, um, when they were at the foot of, of Sinai, they were getting the, like I said, they were getting the law, the tablets, the tablets. And Jeremiah 31, 33 talks about this, um, this thing about the tablets. They received the tablets. Jeremiah 
31, 33. I'm almost done here. Now I got a hundred more scriptures. No, but <laughs> all right. 31, 33. Um, okay. But this shall, you know, let me start at 31. I'm sorry, 31, 31. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I have made with their fathers in that day, uh, that I took them out of the land to bring them out of the land, took them by the hand to bring them out of the hand of Egypt, which my covenant uh, they break, although I was a husband to them, saith Yahweh. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith Yahweh, I will put my law in their inward parts. I will write it on their hearts and I will be their Yahweh and, I, and, and they shall be my people. And, you know, and then it goes on, they shall teach no more and, and every, but, um, um, because, you know, the spirit is going to, well, but anyway, but the whole thing is that I, the point I want to make with this is they the, this this the laws were written in stone and these on stone tablets and it goes from stone tablets to our hearts. We have to he will write it on our hearts. We have to let him um, his word into our heart. And let it be part of us. And so we go from heaven, the stone tablets at the uh, uh, given at Sinai to the to the to the um, word being written in our heart on the day of Pentecost by the Holy Spirit, by the Ruach HaKadosh. OK, and so. Um, all right. David said in Psalm 40 and 8, he said um, in. in um, let, well, let me read it. I, I was going to just say it, but I, I remember saying it wrong one time when I looked it up. Um, as, um, let me see. Psalm 40 and 8. Psalm 40 and 8. Okay. I delight to do thy will, O my Yahweh. Yea, thy law is within my heart. We have to have his law in our heart. We have to receive it you know and 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 obey it and do it just do it okay <laughs> all right um and then we go to um oh boy psalm 119 verse 10 psalm 119 verse 10 psalm 119 verse 10 this is a little longer than usual so i'm trying to get through it um david is talking he said with my whole heart have i sought thee Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. You know, with, we have to seek him, seek his face. Seek ye first the kingdom of the most high God and his righteousness. We have to seek him. And when we go after him, we will find him. And he will, um, you know, and he will open his, his arms for us. And, and he said, with my whole heart I sought thee. Let me not wander. We, we want to have that desire. And, and, and this is the test to let you know who you really are. If you're really a child of the most high God, your desire is going to be to serve him. Your desire is going to want to be to, to keep his commandments, to follow his word. And so uh, if, if you find that you are rebellious, and we talked about this a couple weeks ago, that spirit of rebellion is witchcraft. And so... This is witchcraft. And so if you have that rebellion going on, you might want to check yourself and see where your heart really is. Is your heart really for the most high? And if it's not, you got to turn it around. You're still breathing. So there's a chance you can turn it around right now. All right. And then he says, my, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin again. See, we got to have an attitude where we don't want to sin. We got to love him so much that, that we want to follow him. We want to keep his commandments. And he 
He will let us know. That Holy Spirit, when we're going in the wrong direction, the Holy Spirit is going to let us know. He's going to warn us and say, no, don't go this way. Don't go that way. Here, I, I want you to go this other way. And he will lead us and he will guide us. But we got to open ourselves up and let him do the leading. It's not our will, but his will be done. And that's what we got to do. All right. So Amen. I'm widening this. I'm, I'm, I'm winding it down. And, and, and so when we when we look at this, all right, um, Second Timothy 316, 2 Timothy 316 tells us about this Holy Spirit that is in us. 2 Timothy 316 lets us know why we have to hide this, this the word in our heart. It's because all scripture is by is given by inspiration of Yahweh and is prop, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Verse 17, that the man of Yahweh may be perfect and, it, and, and, and that means complete, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. He will prepare us to do his will, to do his work. Just like when he, he prepared with his spirit, the man did to, um, to be able to make all of the, the furnishings for the temple. He, he, uh, he, he prepared him by letting the spirit fill him. We have to let the spirit have charge over us and fill us so that we can do his will. And on our own, we can't do it. We're not meant to do it that way. Um, when we look at it, John 6, 63, John 6, 63. And this is this is the last scripture, John 6, 63. Um, <laughs> because it all points to this, John 6, 63. When we're talking about the word and the word written in our hearts, the word having, you know, we need to think on the word. We need to uh, let it um, be in our heart. And here's why. It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh. And the flesh profiteth nothing. The words I speak to you, and this is Joshua talking, they are spirit and they are life. The words that he gives us, that is all part of the Ruach HaKadosh. It's all part of the Holy Spirit. And they are life. If we want that life abundantly, we got to have that spirit. All right. Um, if you don't have it, if you examined yourself and it's not there, you have to realize that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every person have sinned and come short of the glory of God aside from Yahshua. And all we have to do is realize that, admit it, repent and then we need and we need that Holy Spirit to be able to make it and the only way to get the Holy Spirit is through believing and receiving Yahshua Jesus as your personal Savior that is the only way he said I am the way the truth and the life no man cometh before the Father but by me he's the only way and if you want to know how to do that um, just ask him. Just ask him to come into your heart, to come into your life. Tell him and, and agree that you would make him Lord over your life, that he would be your master, that you would serve him. It's not like, it's, it's not a bad thing. It, you know, sometimes, you know, people think that it's a bad thing. Oh, he will be my master. I don't want a master. But it's not like that. He, he loves us and, and he leads us. He guides us. He provides for us. He gives us strength. He, I mean, he, he is everything. And then he doesn't stop while we're in this physical body. When our body leaves, excuse me, when our body leaves here then we have a resting place in him. You know, he, he, mm, he, all, he gives us rest. He gives us so much. If you have more, if you want more information, um, 
message me, those online, message me. Uh, put it in the comments. Um, if you want to call or text, my number is 317-683-0283. But don't let a day go by. Don't let another day go by if you don't know him as Savior. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for what you have done. I thank you for your Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh. And I pray that anyone that hears this message will, will feel your presence, will feel your spirit, touch them with your spirit. Let them have a taste of what it's like to be with you, to be in your family, to, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. If they've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, let them be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I ask all these things in Yahshua's name. Amen.